Hey there guys, I haven't made a live video in a while, but I thought today was the day because I have a lot to say. First of all, I deleted Facebook off of my phone so that I wouldn't get sucked in. And if you want to stay up to date with what I'm sharing, you'll have to find it on Instagram and <laughs> Instagram stories. Um, so basically what I wanted to cover today is how Americans are being conditioned to believe that people that are questioning the narrative or people that are speaking up for their rights are selfish, they're conspiracy theorists, they're crazy, right? Who's gotten some of that lately? And if you have, comment and let me know what has happened when you have questioned the narrative or when you have shared something online and people jump all over you. Because this has happened to me a lot. In fact, today I had, I shared a really interesting and compelling video on my Instagram story about, um, it was by Tucker from Fox and I'm not a huge Fox person. I'm not into any media in fact, but I'm loving more and more of what he shares because he has this witty way of sharing the story. And he was talking about what's going on in Seattle. And for those of you who don't know, Seattle has um, some issues with some anarchists who have claimed downtown Seattle as their autonomous zone. And basically, um, the way I understand it is uh, if you declare that you're not part of the United States and you're therefore renouncing your American citizenship, then isn't that an act of war by occupying land? in the United States? I don't know, just a question, putting it out there. Um, but anyway, what I noticed when I shared that video was I got a lot of people messaging me saying, great job, thank you for speaking up. I love your content. Thank you for sharing the truth. Thank you for being bold. Because a lot of people, they're thinking these things, they're asking questions, but they're not actually speaking up because of the backlash they receive. And how many of you guys have received backlash for asking any questions online? I know I do. Um, but anyway, I had a lady message me and tell me that I am only supposed to stand for health and wellness and detoxing. And because I'm sharing conspiracy theories, no wonder I'm still sick. And she hopes that I continue to stay sick. So basically she's cursing me. First she shames me into trying to believe what she believes. And then she uh, hexes or curses me um, because I don't. And I, I also didn't take the bait. I didn't comment back to her and be rude or call her names or try and shame her because I've never done that. Those of you who follow me have noticed, I'll ask a question. I'll um, point you towards some resources and I'll let you do your own research. But I'm not gonna call you names if you don't believe what I believe because here in the United States, we have the right to believe what we believe. Am I right? Who believes that? Like, I don't know. Maybe it's not being taught in schools how to have common courtesy. Um, I definitely know that we're not taught from the book, How to Win Friends and Influence People, <laughs> which I wanted to comment back to her and say, maybe you need this book, sister. Um, but instead I just commented back with the emoji of the big, whoa, a wide-eyed, wide-eyed face. You know, that one, the one where you're like, what? <laughs> anyway, I was thinking about it and um, I thought I would share with you all how to dig in a little bit because my guess is many of you are following me, you've followed me for a long time and you trust my opinion and you might be sitting back thinking, what is wrong with Elise? Why is she so crazy? And I know that some of you are thinking that. How? Because you are talking about it and you're talking to each other and then people mention it to people that I know that then tell me and I'm like, hello, just talk to me if you think I'm crazy and ask me what's going on and why do I believe what I believe? because I'll point you towards resources and let you research it for yourself. And we can still be friends because I'm not gonna shame you or call you names if you don't believe what I believe, like so many people out there. So how do you share information with others and let them do their own research? Well, first you gotta discover search engines that are not censored. Because if you're going online for, to do some research and you wanna learn about, um, uh, maybe it's a, um, how do you say? hot button issue happening in the media today, I can think of 50, um, and you're wanting to get some more info, then where do you go for the info? Do you go to Google? Who knows? Where do you guys go? Where do you go and look for your research? Where are you guys getting information? 
Are you digging in and getting some information on your own? Or are you just getting it from what you see on social media? Where do you guys go? I'm so curious. We have 50 some people watching. I know we'll get tons more on the replay. If you are watching live, thank you for joining me today. And if you are um, catching the replay, please let me know that you catch the replay later. Okay, so I'm curious, where are you getting your info? Is it social media? Is it the news? Is it what? Let me know. I wanna know. What search engines are you guys using? Now, this is a big deal because you may or may not know it, but Facebook, Instagram, YouTube, um, Google, they're all censored and they're all bought. And what do I mean by that? They're influenced by their investors and their investors have ties to the deep state. If you don't know what the deep state is, write that one down. That's gonna go on your research list. I'm gonna give you a list of topics. You can go and do your own research, um, but I see Karis shared that she's using the search engine DuckDuckGo. I personally have deleted Google. Google is no longer part of my daily game plan because they are so censored. You can't even find natural remedies like you used to be able to on there. Anyway, like I said, these major players, these major tech companies are bought out, literally, by their investors. And um, they're part of the deep state, big pharma. You guys can do your research on that. Um, but what I'm gonna recommend is you can look to something called WikiLeaks. How many of you ever heard of WikiLeaks? That is a basically, I guess you would call it a clearinghouse or something, but it's, it's um, a location you can go to see uh, emails that have been leaked to the public right that you may not have um seen before now chuck mentions he fact checks on snopes who knows why snopes is not a good place to go you guys snopes has been debunked again and again it is not um a valid fact checker okay they are bought out they have the founders have a very questionable history and i'll let you do your own research on snopes <laughs> in fact um, my friend at i think it was Oh my goodness, I'm gonna space out the name. Mm, one of my friends is a blogger anyway. She wrote a whole article about Snopes a couple years ago and about why they were not a valid fact-checking fact entity. Basically, I think that they are owned by a key player in the deep state, so they're influencing. Because if you guys think about it, if you can control the information that's being shared in the general public, you can control what the public does. That's why we call it television because they are going to tell you a vision. They call it programming because it's programming your mind. Prove me wrong, prove me wrong, you guys. Um, here's another topic to look up while you're doing your research on either, on either DuckDuckGo or Brave. These are two search engines that I've found to be very useful. Um, but another, um, Another topic I want you to look into is called Project Mockingbird. Who's heard of this? Project Mockingbird, you all. Project Mockingbird will be very interesting for you when you learn about this. And it has ties to the CIA. It goes back to right after JFK was assassinated. And this is the origination, let me share, the origination of, um, of of, of, of the term conspiracy theory is because the CIA was trying to debunk those questioning the narrative of how JFK was killed or who did it. So I don't have any definitive answers for you on that, but I do know that they influence what is shared on media. And they also influence what is shared in movies and the news and social media today. So super interesting. Um, also, you'll, you'll notice if, well, maybe you'll notice, maybe you won't. If you're following me on Instagram, you'll see in my stories, because that's where I'm sharing all this stuff for you all. But um, there is a video of how, <laughs> it, it's, it's today, it's the Tucker video I shared. And, and you know what, if you are already biased and you hate Fox News, fine, hate them, I don't care. But at least go and watch the video that I shared today. Because he um, is talking about and showing some clips um, and it's so interesting to watch the clips of how the mainstream media literally parrots like a mockingbird, right? They repeat the same words across all of their different news channels because um, the top six, or sorry, 
The 90% of our news media is owned by six major corporations and Fox was sadly just bought out by Disney. Why do I say sadly? Because Disney has a very um, tarnished history. And again, you'll have to do your own research on that because I'm not gonna draw any conclusions for you, but I will point you in the directions of the topics to research and I will point you in the direction of which platforms are not censored, okay? Again, that is WikiLeaks and out of, or sorry, Wiki, no, what did I just say? The <laughs> search engines are DuckDuckGo and Brave. Perfect, I love your comments, you guys. Thanks, Jennifer, Tucker is the shit, <laughs> I love it. Um, so yeah, Tucker does such a great way of like pulling different resources and then the way he, his narrative is, it's almost tongue in cheek and it really cracks me up. So watch that video I shared in Instagram stories today by him. And again, that's the video that I shared today that someone commented to me or messaged me privately and told me that I'm only supposed to share stuff about health and wellness and how dare I share anything that is related to a conspiracy theory and no wonder I'm sick and she continues and she hopes I continue to stay sick. I mean, come on, really? Is that how we um, influence others and change their opinion? By shaming them? And then, of course, giving them a, how do you say it? Hexing or <laughs> cursing them? It's so crazy. Yes, Canelli, I like Brian Rice, Rose too. I know, right? So come on. After I had already gotten a bunch of messages from people telling me they were so glad that I was being brave and speaking up. And I'll tell you what, it does take bravery to speak up because I do get a lot of people who think that they know my purpose in life and that they think that they know better what I should be talking about on my personal platform to the followers that I have created through sharing my life over the years. And I'll tell you what, a lot of people think that they, um, like that that's their right. And I'm like, I don't even know your name. You don't even have a real name as your profile account. Like what in the world? So basically, Sometimes I get a little triggered and I might comment back something a little snotty, let's say. Um, but I'll, usually I'll just delete their comment and block them and on we go. Because you know what, to be honest, here's what I, what I believe about social media. If you don't like what people are talking about, don't listen to what they're talking about. Go listen to something else, whatever. But don't name call or shame. That doesn't make any sense either. So anyway, I'm giving you the list of topics. You guys ready? You can type them in the comments so you can come back to this and um, just grab it from the comments if you want to. But back to what we were saying with conspiracy theories is um, here's the crazy thing. Every conspiracy theory that I have researched and then believed in has proven true. I have a very, very strong intuition. I trust my intuition. I pray. I spend time reading the Bible and writing in my journal. And I am an educated and smart person. I am not um, irrational or emotionally driven where I can get inflamed easily. And you know, th that's just not part of my personality. So part of the reason that I am compelled to talk about these things right now is that it, I feel incensed literally I am livid, that we have gotten to a place where our country and many people in the world, Penelope, I see you in Greece, and I know this is happening there, um, we're just like, the wool is being pulled over people's eyes. And why? It's because if you control the media, you control the programming, you can control the beliefs of the masses. And so how do people wake up and find the information? Like I said, you've got to do your own research. You've got to take some personal responsibility and dig in. And it's gonna suck. It's something that's called cognitive dissonance. When everything you have believed about the way our country operates and our safety nets, etc., cetera, um, when, when it is rocked and it is rocked to the core, here's what's happened. Here's what happens, and this is something called Stockholm Syndrome, and I learned this from my friend Seth, who's also on here. But Stockholm Syndrome, and you can write this down in the comments there to go back and research, but essentially that is that people that were captive then will defend their captors because that becomes their reality. And so here we are, we have a situation where we have a lot of things that we believe to be true, right? And 
We look to media to confirm it, but if the media is bought and biased, how can that actually be confirmation? Um, so when you go down this rabbit hole of learning and starting to uh, take some personal responsibility and get educated, and I'm gonna say get educated because I don't believe our school system does this, and I am a former teacher in the school system, so I can, I believe, rightfully say this from personal experience. We are not really teaching people how to ask questions, because I don't know if you know, but our school system was originally created to create employees to work in factories that would show up on time and when the bell rings, they go to the next task, et cetera, and you see that in schools. Anyway, uh, this is my personal belief that our school system is not serving our children for their future. So we homeschool and have done it for 10 years. But my point is this, if you want to get educated on what's really going on behind the scenes, you gotta do the work and you're gonna have some cognitive dissonance where you're gonna to wanna to defend what you believed before you were exposed to it. And that's why I think people are so nasty to me because what I put in front of them, they think it's effing crazy and I'm just a stupid, selfish effing bee. And I get, you guys, I get so much of that. And so what I'm telling you and sharing with you today is that once you go down this and you research this on your own, and I'm gonna give you some topics to look up, um, you're going to start to question your experience. You're going to start to question what you believe. You're going to question where you're getting your news sources. And you're going to probably be a little bit confused and probably a whole lot of pissed off, which is how I feel. And um, pretty much I feel like how can I talk about other things <laughs> like health and wellness when if we just fall down and let this happen, what will our future look like? Like how will I even have a business if everything goes to heck in a handbasket when we don't pay attention and wake up because what's happening is the rights are being taken away from you right now. Like this is happening. This has been happening for months. And I do believe that the coronavirus is a real virus, but I don't believe that the numbers were real that they shared and that and I do believe that they put us in lockdown and some states are still in full on lockdown. Um, based on bunk science that's been proven again and again, okay? So th there is where we stand. And I said it from the beginning that I didn't believe the narrative. And I got so much SHIT because of it, didn't I? And then I also spoke up when this whole thing happened in Minnesota. And now I'm a racist. And I am now, what is their favorite term? Um, privileged. <laughs> Oh my gosh, hello. Just asking questions, right? So anyway, these are the topics I want you all to look up. I'm so curious to see what you find. Um, ready? Type them in the comments for me so you guys can go back and then you can look them up or come back to the video or whatever. Where, I don't know. If you click the share button on this, I'm sure there's people out there that want to also do their own research. So. Yes, Canelli says divide and conquer. That is so true. If there's a false flag, meaning a planned event that is meant to emotionally trigger you and emotionally trigger the masses, what's gonna happen? Do you, okay, I, I know I keep saying I'm gonna go through my list, but I, you guys, I have to say this because I know how the brain works. The brain science has been my passion since college. That's what I studied in college as well as education. So here's what I want you to know. And the way the brain works, we have 80 some people live on this video. Click the share button right now um, because you can see it play out for yourself, but you'll also be able to see it play out for your family and friends and people around you. When there is a false flag or there is an event that triggers the masses, what is going to happen? They're going to have an emotional trigger which takes you out of the thinking part of your brain. This is called your prefrontal cortex. It's gonna take you into the brain stem. The brain stem is where we operate from fight, flight, or freeze, right? When we are triggered and we are emotional and afraid, hello, coronavirus, angry, hello, the race wars of, of lately, um, what happens is you're gonna be using the brainstem and the brainstem is fight, flight, or freeze. You're not gonna be using your rational thinking, critical thinking, question asking mind. And here's the other part that'll happen. You'll, you guys notice this, it's so fascinating because of this um, research and studies I've done over the years to see this actually playing out in humanity today. Here's the thing, this is so fascinating to me. 
is when other people are not caught in the brainstem in this area where they are in fight, flight, or freeze, they are going to be the critical thinkers. They're going to be rational in their thinking and they're going to be asking questions. They're not people that are going to be slinging names. Um, they're not going to be shaming other people. They're not going to be trying to belittle others, right? They're going to literally be asking questions and proposing these questions. And here's the thing, the other people that are operating from this part of the brain, they're really angry, they're really scared, they're going to try and shame those people that are asking questions and thinking critically because they don't fit into the narrative of the person who is living in fear and anger. Do you see that playing out in our culture today? Do you not think that the people behind planning all of these know this? Do you know that there's actually a book written about it over 100 years old? <laughs> like, oh. Okay, so hopefully that has helped to explain some of what you're observing when you're, if you are one of these rational critical thinkers right now, not caught in the brainstem, um, you know, that fight, flight, or freeze area of your brain, and you're looking at things and you're going, what in the world is going on with humanity right now? Everyone has lost their ever lover mind. Uh, okay, that should explain it for you and help you to get a grasp and get a grip. Because remember, this will pass, but don't be, don't be silent during this time. Um, Daniela Bloom, I, I know the book, oh, I gotta remember the name of the book. Maybe someone can type in the name of that book. And if not, I will do a little research and try and um, type it in for you in the comments later. Okay, ready for some, these are just some topics. But I'm going to uh, point you in the direction of a, I just love, okay, this, this guy named David, he creates this show every single day called the X22 Report. And you can find it on YouTube. You can find it on BitChute. BitChute is uncensored. But if you're still on YouTube, go ahead there. It's X22 Report. Someone type that in the comments. Um, that, this is such a good, uh, I love this report. Because what he does is he takes... Um, the Q drops, and some of you are going to be like, oh my God, Q is a cult. No, it's not. Q is not a cult. That's what the media would like you to believe because Q knows something that they don't want you to know about. So think about it from that perspective and take this perspective for a moment. Just give me the month of June where you just dig into some of the things I'm sharing here. Don't get all, get your feathers all ruffled and your panties in a bunch and be like, oh my God, at least it's so crazy. Um, you might be doing that, but just challenge yourself to get into the critical thinking part of your brain and just drop the story about this conspiracy, conspiracy theory stuff and take a look. Just take a look, just dig in. Give yourself three weeks. Give yourself three weeks to prove me wrong. Prove me wrong, I, I want you to. I want you to. And um, anyway, my point is this, that there's gonna be some of you watching this who are gonna be flipping out right now because I'm saying these things, I don't care. Um, X22 report, he's gonna draw parallels for you from what is happening in our judicial system with what is happening with Hillary Clinton right now. Um, guess what, you probably didn't hear about this, I think it was on Monday or Tuesday this past week when she was uh, called into court to testify and they had to postpone the trial until September 9th. You probably didn't hear about that, why? Because the media didn't report about it. Because that was one of the days that the riots blew up across the country. Planned? Hmm, I wonder. Um, and then there's just a lot of things going on right now. So what I want you to do is write down these topics. I keep saying I'm gonna give them to you, but then other things, I'm like, oh, I have to talk about this. Um, so ready, topics, Pizzagate. Deep State, Frazzle Drip, Podesta Emails, Anthony Weiner's Laptop, General Flynn, Shadow Government, and anyone else add whatever topics you want. I didn't want to give you too long of a list to get you started, just in case you have no idea what I'm talking about. Um, use the search engines, DuckDuckGo or Brave, Click the share button now if you have people that you think would benefit from this video or maybe tag them in the comments. Send them a private message and just say, hey, check this out, see what she's talking about here. Um, so basically, again, that is Pizzagate, Deep State, Frazzle Drip, Podesta Emails, Anthony Weiner's Laptop, General Flynn, 
and shadow government. If anyone wants to type those in the comments, that'd be great. Um, and then, again, this X-22 report, the reason I love it, again, is because the way Q works is Q is um, an unknown entity, an unknown person, but someone very high up in the, uh, near the president. And what they do is they will share information with the public through what is known as a Q drop, and you can get that on qmap.pub. That's qmap.pub. And you can, if you guys, I'm gonna give you a challenge in fact, for those of you who are disbelieving absolutely everything I'm saying, um, Q was started in October of 2017. And here's what I want you to do. You'll go to qmap.pub, and I want you to go back to the original drops from um, that October of 2017, numbers one through 50, and read them in light of what is happening today, okay? Just, just, just for an exercise, just to prove me wrong, just see what it says. And um, then, anyway, the reason I love the X-22 report is because they he connects what's happening in um, the, our judicial system with General Flynn, with what's coming out about Pizzagate, with what's coming out about Hillary Clinton, with what's coming out about Obamagate. Um, and he'll connect all of that and then real world events, etc. So it's just really insightful. And here's the interesting thing. Once you start listening to these QX22 reports, um, you're gonna start looking at what's happening in our culture with a little bit of a different perspective. And you're gonna also look at what's happening with what's going on um, with our news media, with the planned riots around the country, with Antifa, with Black Lives Matter. And you're gonna start to realize that this is a little bit deeper than the, what you're taking at the surface face value. In fact, I don't know if you saw this, Michelle says she's watching every day, the X-22 report. Um, on my Instagram, I just shared this yesterday, that Black Lives Matter runs um, international fundraising campaigns. Hmm. Only when there's a, an election year, how interesting, has Black Lives Matter um, been trending as a Google search term. Um, otherwise, there's been no help. There was even no help for a nurse who had black patients dying of COVID when she called Black Lives Matter in New York um, in April saying I need help for an advocation for these patients and she got no phone call back, like, come on. Um, so, anyway, yes, the donations are shocking. <laughs> so, <laughs> Michelle, oh my gosh. So, anyway, they um, even, I've even seen on the news media when they've been doing interviews, people pointing, here's the crazy thing. When people go to Black Lives Matter to make their donation, the donation, um, first of all, Black Lives Matter is not a nonprofit. So if that's what you've been led to believe, that's not true. There is no um, entity or office or person that heads it up here in the United States. Interesting. Um, so when people made a donation to what they think is this, this cause or movement, this is the crazy piece. It go, it's funneled through an organization called Act Blue. And Act Blue is a democratic fundraising organization with money funneling towards candidates um, for election. And did you know it's illegal for international money to be funneled into campaign fundraising here in the United States? Hmm, interesting, interesting. How will this play out? I don't know. But just something interesting to know, um, to pay attention to and to make note of. Anyway, um, like I said, I've deleted Facebook off of my phone. I can't handle the drama here. Um, but I'm loving my Instagram stories is where I'm sharing a lot. And I'll, I, I'll come back on again and do another Facebook Live here once I get some more interesting content to share, which I'm sure I will because in the coming weeks, expect some kind of false flag event, another emotional drama. Um, one of the predictions is there'll be another mass shooting because they're trying to take the Second Amendment right away from people. So you might also research the uh, mass shootings that we've seen happen here in the US on one of these search engines and just kind of, you know, ask questions and say, what really happened? Was it a hoax? Was it planned? Maybe you'll do some research and find out. <laughs> anyway, I don't like to tell people what to believe, but I do like to point them in the direction of doing their own research and, and becoming empowered because yes, a lot will happen and unfortunately, there's some big court cases coming up with 
Clinton and Obama and um, the Podesta brothers, Anthony Weiner, and they're part of the deep state. And so part of the problem is they love to use public, you know, trauma to distract because what happens when there's some kind of public trauma like a mass shooting? What happens? What's on the news then? And what's drowned out? Hmm. Interesting. Anyway, if you guys have any other news sources that you're loving that you want to share in the comments, please do share those below. I hope you've enjoyed my video today. It's been nice coming back and visiting with you guys. And um, I hope to see you over on my Instagram stories. <laughs> and then uh, I'll continue to be sharing resources with you and information and hopefully, um, you know, I'm sure some people would love it if I got censored and shadow banned, which happens to a lot of people who speak up against the mainstream narrative. Um, and if that happens, um, well, I'll, I'll share this. My podcast called Detox Life is coming out soon. So if, you, if I suddenly disappear off of social media, find me on, it, on the podcast platforms. That will be happening very soon. I know I keep saying that. I've been talking about it for ages, but... It's happening. I'm so excited. I love you guys. Love you, Canelli. Love you, Nikki. So good to see you guys live. And hope you're well. Send me a private message if you want to chat. If you want to tell me how you feel. If you want to share your story. If, you're, if you've been struggling with speaking out. If you don't feel like something's sitting right. Share it with me. I'm here. I'll listen. I want to hear what you have to say. I'm not going to shame you. I'm not going to call you names. Even if you believe the total opposite of me. I would never do that to you. And I wouldn't curse you either, which a lot of people do to me, which is, I just don't know. I want to tell them, go read in how to win, what is it? Influence people and win friends. Win friends and influence people. <laughs> I'm like, go read that book. You need some of that. Anyway, the Bible helps understand a lot of the things happening today too, in my opinion. Okay, love you guys. We'll talk to you soon. Take care.